It was December 17. He stopped being president in January 17. And his people, three weeks before, wrote to Shobhana and said, he wants the questions. So she said to me, would you please give us some questions? Because uh, if we don't, he won't come. So I said, yeah, sure. So it's on a TV interview. I sent 16 questions. To my astonishment, he wrote back, or his people wrote back and said, questions A, B, C, and D can't be asked. I said to Shobhana, I said, listen, for your sake, I will agree not to ask them, but I guarantee to you, I will bring up each and every one of them. Because who the hell is he to tell us not to ask questions, right? One of them, which was the last question, it was designed to create a smile and a laugh, was America is famous for two Donalds, Donald Duck and Donald Trump. Which of the two is more representative of your country? Yeah. He gave me a long-winded answer, which clearly showed he'd missed the whole joke. <laughs> and it was just a joke. It was, it was the question that needed a long answer. He did a laugh. That's all it needed. This was in February 98, um, the election that brought Vajpayee to power for the first time, or second time rather. And I was interviewing L.K. Advani, um, who was busy campaigning over the country. I said to him, I said, You have Rakshas ke seen Ukhar ke muh pe muskrar dal di hai. Kya BJP badal rahe hain And he sat there. Ten minutes later, there was a commercial break and he disappeared. I thought he'd not have a pee. And he didn't come back. So after a while, five, ten minutes, I walked into the next room. He was sitting there. I said, what's happened? Why did you come back? He says, if you think I'm a Rakshas, why do you want to interview me? I said, no. So I said, I'm really sorry. I said, it was just a turn of phrase from my mouth and I accept it was indiscreet, rude, but I didn't mean it the way. And he was very, very sweet. He was very indulgent. He's a politician and therefore I shouldn't have any qualms about actually honestly telling him that's what people think. He's not a, he's not someone I'm meeting in a drawing room. He's not uh, an actor or actress about whom you don't want to be needlessly blunt because it's impolite. This is a politician who's elected because people vote for him. Therefore, he should know what they think of him. I'll tell you what I think when I, I, I I'm not denying there could have been a misreading of his personality, but I hadn't known of his personality in great depth. I didn't know the man and therefore I had no re reading of his personality in my mind. I'd virtually only met him once or twice before, although my first meeting was very impressive. I think the error was that for some bizarre reason he, he was doing the interview in English. And I think in those days his English was nowhere near as fluent as it is now. it's actually quite fluent. Leave the accent aside, it's quite fluent. Those days it wasn't. Um, and I think there was a translation from Hindi or Gujarati in his head before he spoke in English. And that put him at a disadvantage. And I think the combination of this tough question and the approach uh, and the fact that he was, he sensed that he was having a problem answering because of this transition. Had he been in Hindi, he'd have been much more fluent. He'd have put me down immediately because he knows how to do it in Hindi. In English, it's a problem. And having begun in English, I don't think he could switch to Hindi because that would also look as if he's retreated to another language. So I think he may have, in a sense, boxed himself in a corner by trying to do it in English, which is a terrible mistake. He, he shouldn't have. Um, and, and since it wasn't for BBC, it was for CNN, he could have easily done it in Hindi, but he didn't. I think the other thing that may have had an impact on him is I quoted what the Supreme Court had said about being a modern day Nero. And he came back and said, show it to me in any judgment and I'll answer it. Right? And at that time, because I had relied on what the papers had written, I said, you're right, it was only a spoken comment. Actually, it wasn't. In April 2004, Justices Durai Swami Raju and Arajit Pasai had actually put this in writing in a judgment. But I didn't know it. And I said, so what if it's a verbal comment? It's a comment every paper picked up. That's the opinion of the Chief Justice. Does it not worry you? Right? That's around the point uh, when he, I suggested, why don't you just apologize to express regret and get it over. He said, I've done that. I said, do it again. Do it as often as needed. Don't let this hold up the good work. And that's when he said, no, enough. I think that also perhaps uh, affected him. Of course, I, I don't deny it that uh, my career has suffered. Um, I'm not on TV. 
it's not as high profile as it used to be. But there's a sense in which my career has also benefited is the wrong word, but acquired something it didn't have. At least there are some, not many, who think Karan is bold and outspoken. That wouldn't have been the case otherwise. It certainly wasn't that opinion that people had of me in 2017, the extent to which they have now, right? Um, it has alienated me from the BJP. They boycott me. I can't interview them. And that is a block for me. We are never invited to any parties like that together. I, they have press conferences. I'm not invited. Uh, they invite journalists for, I don't know, gathering. I'm never invited. Uh, not that I mind, but I'm not invited. So there is no party where I meet. The only person who I knew well as a friend before he became a minister was Jay Shankar. Um, and before he became, when he was foreign secretary, uh, when he was ambassador in America, when he was president with the Tata, during all three stages, he's come over for dinner twice a year or something like that. I've been to him. We got to know each other well because there was a man called Shankar Bajpal, you know who I'm talking about, who was a sort of mentor for Jay Shankar and a very, very good friend of mine, much older than me. And Jay and I, on average, twice a month, would be dining with uh, Shankar Bajpai, which is where we got to know each other really well. One day in April 2019, the elections were still underway. We were both walking out of Shankar Bajpai's home at about 11 or 11.15 at night after dinner, and Jay said to me, my book is coming out. I'd really like you to read it, and perhaps if you think it's worth it, do an interview. I said, I'd love to. I'd be honored. I said, look, I'm a slow reader. Send me the book as quickly as you can. I'd love to do it. And obviously, he meant for the while. Three weeks or four weeks later, he became a minister. Somewhere around August, September, maybe to September, reviews of his book began appearing. I, when the first review appeared, I wrote to him to say, I, I thought we had discussed my understanding that your first interview would be me. No reply at all. I think I must have written that letter two or three times to him. No reply. Absolutely none. And I realized at once that Karan is a problem for him because now he's in the government. And un understandably, his attitude to Karan, the journalist, will be different to what it was before he joined the government. Now he has to share his government's uh, antipathy and uh, lack of sympathy. I will add, if I may, that he continues to be nice to me personally when we meet. On the personal side, there is no problem. But professionally, there's no way. Right.